If you look at your Bible right now, the huge portions of your Bible consist of the Old Testament. The Old Testament takes about two-thirds of your Bible. The Old Testament itself actually is the Holy Scriptures for the ancient nations of Israel. They don't call it as an Old Testament as the Christian would call that portions of the Bible. But they will refer it as the Tanakh. Yes, Tanakh. T-N-K. It's an abbreviation for three categories of writings that can be found in the Old Testament or in the Tanakh which is the first one is the Torah, which is the first five book of Moses, and Nevi'im, which is the writing of the prophets, and last but not least, Ketuvim, which is the writings, simply the literature work written by various authors. Now, for this video, we are going to talk about the prophets. Yes, the prophets, which is Nevi'im. And Nevi'im, or the writing of the prophets, takes a huge portions in the Old Testament, starting from the book of Isaiah all the way to Malachi. Now, what is prophet? Whenever you think about prophet, probably you will think prophet is a fortune teller, someone who can predict the future, someone who can see the future, and then like, you know, give warning to everyone about like what will happen in the future. Well, well, actually that is just like the small portions of the role of the prophet. They have bigger responsibility than that one. Being a fortune teller is not the main responsibility of a prophet. The prophets basically, these are the people who had encounter with God and then God gave them missions to the ancient nations of Israel. The mission is mainly is to deliver a message or a teaching to the ancient nations of Israel. I've mentioned about the message several times. Now what was the message? That's the question. What was the message? The message was usually connected into this main theme of idea which is the ancient nations of Israel are the covenant people of God. They were being chosen by God. They were being saved from the slavery in Egypt. And they were being assigned as a part of the covenant, become a holy nation, which has become the source of blessing for their neighboring kingdoms and also for all of the nations in the world. How they will achieve that? How they can become like a source of blessings? by being a nation that carry the name of God. So they must be able to create peace, justice, and love within themselves. So therefore, they become source of blessing for the neighboring kingdoms and also throughout the world. That is the main theme of the message. This message was being elaborated in the first five book of Moses, which is the Torah, which is Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, and Numbers. And then the Israelites, they have to follow this Torah, they have to follow this law in order for them to be a nation that can produce peace, justice, love, and righteousness. So that was the message from God for the ancient nations of the Israelites through these prophets. But why this message need to be delivered to the ancient nations of the Israel? Because the kings and also the rulers, they forgot about this covenant. They broke the covenant. Instead of like creating peace, they creating war and hatred. Instead of creating like justice, they create injustice against the poor and also the outsiders or the foreigners. Instead of like creating righteousness, they worship idols. They fall into the sense of idolatries. That's what happened. If you watch my videos about like you know how the kingdom of Israel split into two, I mentioned there how the Israelites end up become idolatrous or worshiping the idols now these are the opposite of what God wants from his people to keep the covenant now because of that one God sent these messengers God sent these prophets to deliver the message there are three ways how God sent this message through these prophets through the ancient nations of the Israelites here we go first rebuking or criticizing giving a strong kind of like, you know, corrections to the rulers, to the kings, and also to the priests that they have gone astray from the covenant. Of course, that makes these prophets are not popular among the rulers. The rulers doesn't like to be criticized, and what happened to them? They were end up in being persecuted. For example, prophet Jeremiah, he had to be imprisoned by the king because like the king refused to listen to him. The prophets were also asking people to repent. You know what repent is? Repent means Turn around 180 degrees from your wrongdoings, doing the U-turn. You're going to the wrong way. So the prophets were 
telling everyone, the rulers, the Israelites, that they've gone the wrong way against God. They're, they've been doing it the wrong way and they have to go back to God. They have to go back to the covenant. They have to go back to their identity as a God's covenant people, as the holy nations. These prophets, they were tirelessly telling everyone to repent because God is merciful and God is willing to forgive if the people repent from their sin. Way number three, the prophets of God, they will also give warnings. The prophets of God, they will give warnings to anyone, everyone who refuses to repent. The consequences will be upon them if they are not stopped sinning. God will judge those who keep breaking the covenant, but God will heal and restore to those who repent or to those who are faithful to the covenant. Additional explanation about God's judgment. The prophets oftentimes use the term the day of the Lord. Now, what is the day of the Lord? If you think about like the day of the Lord is like, you know, when the Armageddon ha happens or the end of the world happens. Well, not really necessarily. Actually, it's not only that kind of like part. Uh, the day of the Lord is basically the day that the Lord will come and will judge those, as I said earlier before, those who keep breaking the covenant, who keep sinning, and who kept the who kept this kind of like you know attitude of like rebelling against God. There will be special judgment for them, but at the same time, God will also heal and restore and will reward those who remain faithful to the covenant. So to cut the story short, what is the day of the Lord? The day of the Lord is the day that God came to earth. And then it will be good news for those who remain faithful to him. So it will be bad news to those who keep breaking the covenant by practicing evil, by keep sinning, by practicing injustice against the poor, by practicing idolatry, and also by spreading hatred instead of like peace and joy. Yes, during the day of the Lord, it will, it will be bad news for them. Now there's this kind of like you know complicated explanations about the day of the Lord that somehow the day of the Lord it happens in the past it happens right now in the present time and it will happen in the future but it's a very kind of like you know complicated theological kind of like discussion which is I will spare you guys from that information but then again if you would like to know I can give you some reference yes I mentioned about good news what good news now the good news is all of these prophets they were being implicitly they talk about a figure, a messianic figure that will come to the world, will come to Israel, and then will bring this, the day of the Lord, to those who remain faithful to him. It will come to the earth and then creating like peace, righteousness, and also justice, also healing and restorations. Now, can you guess who is this messianic person that this prophet talks about? Yeah, at that time, when they wrote about this messianic figure, they didn't know who is that who is this person but it will happen and the people the one who read the one who listen to the teaching of these prophets do they know who is this messianic no they don't even know but however they are longing they are all hoping for this the hope of that the messiah will come this messianic king someone like a king david will come and return and then will restore everything back into the garden of eden yes everything is just kind of like good everything is just kind of like you know wonderful now, who is this messianic person that this prophet talks about? And then, who is this messianic figure that the Israelites, the ancient Israelites, they've been longing and then they've been waiting for this person? Well, the answer is, as a Christian, we believe the answer is in the figure of Jesus Christ. He was the good news. He brought with him peace. He brought with him healing. He brought with him justice together with him. So, who were these prophets? So, these prophets, they were creative and eloquent messengers of God. They carried God's message in a very kind of like in a unique way. And sometimes it's very creative and then sometimes it's very, very profound. Like for example, the prophet of Ezekiel that God told him that he must sleep for many years only on his one side, on his left side. And after that, on the right side on some other times. And even there was a time like, you know, God asked Ezekiel to cook his meal with the fire that made out of a fertilizer. With the idea is like, you know, whoever watched like what Ezekiel's doing, 
they got the message from God. It means like their sin is just as stinky, as, as disgusting, as dirty in the eyes of the Lord and they need to repent. There is this message that God want these people to understand through the life of these prophets because these prophets are the messengers. Then as I said earlier, they will come up with a very creative kind of like idea how to deliver the message properly. If you open up your Bible into like the first part of the Bible, which is the table of contents, then you will found out there are four major prophets and then there are 12 minor prophets. Why do you call it major prophets and also the minor prophets? Simply because the amount of the body of works that they make. These four major prophets, starting with Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel, they had the most writings. They had the longest writing in the Old Testament. And followed by these 12 minor prophets, starting from Hosea all the way to Malachi. I'm not going to list it like one by one. I want you guys to look at it by yourself there in the table of contents, okay? Those are the 12 minor prophets, and then like the first four are the major prophets. So as I said earlier, they, these prophets, they left their teaching and the story about them in the writings. Now, at first, these writings was not really taken care seriously by the Israelites, but they took it seriously. They changed their mind after the fall of the Israel into the hands of the Babylon. Now, another interesting about these prophets, now these prophets, these 12 prophets plus the four major prophets, they do not know each other and then they live in different times stretched from like the 9th century BC all the way to the 4th century BC. Yet, something that is like interesting about these writings, all of these writings, it has a connection. It's, connect, it's connected like one way or another. They have the same theme like as I said earlier in the beginning of the video. The ultimate message or the connecting lines between all of these writings of the prophets are that the people of Israel, they are the God's covenant people. And because of their forgetting about the covenant, God gave them warnings through these prophets and inviting them to repent so they can return, go back into the original plan of the covenant tell itself. Because if not, during the day of the Lord, that they will be destroyed and they will be taken captive. Just like during the time when the Israelites were in Egypt in slavery. But God did not completely abandon them in their captivity. God still rescued them. God still gave them hope and joy what was the hope well the hope is to those who are remain faithful to the covenant even though they were in captivity even though they were in slavery even though they were living miserable god still gave them hope the hope that the coming of the good news what was the good news the good news about the messiah that will bring justice peace and righteousness back to the nation and once again his people God's covenant people, which is including all of us now, as long we receive the coming of this Messiah, as long we kept this covenant, then we will fulfill like the covenant itself, which is we become the source of blessing for our neighbors, for our families, for our friends, and for our country. So that is the conclusion of today's video. Thank you for watching. I see you guys again next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.